Hi, my name is Andrew Edelston. We're here at uh, CES 2013. We're uh, at the NVIDIA booth. And uh, just going to give you a little bit of background on Tegra 4's graphic capability. So with Tegra 4, we've really upped the ante. Uh, Tegra 3 had 12 uh, GPU cores uh, that were used for shader processing and graphics processing. We've bumped that up to 72 cores now. Uh, it's going to let the developers completely good match. Uh, things that weren't possible, uh, that were you know desktop class, are now going to be capable on the new Tegra 4 devices. Uh, the first of which is the, the shield behind me here. Uh, some of the things that we can do, uh, Let's have a look. Uh, some of the games uh, that were already in development. So Riptide 2 just got announced. Uh, it has real-time reflections now. Uh, they're all dynamic, calculated on the fly. Uh, so when you're, you know, you're skimming across the top of the water, bang, straight back, proper reflections. Uh, it also has real-time shadows, and they're really high quality. They're using a, a Tegra 4 feature again, and uh, that hasn't been possible in any uh, mobile processor to the, to the level that we can do now. And that really helps uh, game developers get really high quality graphics and, and just increase the, the level of detail that they can provide to the players. Some of the other stuff we're doing, uh, there's a, a game that just got announced uh, on iOS and by Vivid Games called uh, Real Boxing. And they've, again, they've taken that and zooped it up for Tegra 4. So uh, they have uh, bloom effects, they have depth of field, uh, you know, when, when you get hit now, there's like this motion blur effect. Uh, it's simply amazing. Even things like uh, on the skin of the boxes, they're doing uh, per pixel specular lighting now. And, you know, extra little things uh, like putting tattoos, like really high resolution tattoos that are going to let the players like customize how their player looks. All that type of thing now, uh, really great for the developers. They can just go mad. Yeah, one of the other great features of Tegra 4, we're going to be able to do proper dynamic lighting. You might have seen games like uh, Shadow Gun or the original Dead Trigger, uh, where the graphics are great, uh, but a lot of the, the lighting uh, and the shading is actually baked into the textures. Uh, well, now you're going to be able to do more desktop style uh, lighting where you know, the, the, the base texture is, is set and then the actual shade, light, shadow is all calculated in real time. So that'll give a, a lot more uh, flexibility to the designers of the levels and so on. They'll be able to put lights around the scene. They can, maybe you can knock over a light, or maybe you can have a, a flashlight. One of the games uh, that uh, will be coming out soon actually has uh, gun muzzle flashes and, and torch lights on the end, you know, that are casting shadows and then uh, affecting the, the, the world around them. So with Tegra 4, uh, we've really also let developers go mad with physics. Uh, a new game being made by N3V Games in Australia uh, is, a, is a sequel to their very successful Dead on Arrival. And uh, it's an awesome sort of the zombie shooters, you know, survive how many waves come out. And what they did was uh, rather than just sort of, you know, the zombie falling over and then, you know, that was it, they actually added ragdoll physics. Uh, and my particular favorite is to grab the crossbow aim it up, shoot, and watch the zombies pin up against the wall and sort of ragdoll, sort of flop around. Uh, again, all being made possible with the power of this brand new processor, the Tegra 4. Yeah.